We definitely see uh, used vegetable oil or straight vegetable oil as, as part of the equation of helping us be a little more, uh, less dependent on foreign oil. Um, the, they estimate that annually about 4.5 billion gallons of waste vegetable oil are created by the, uh, the, the restaurants and the, the food places in this country. And, but, we call straight vegetable oil. In other words, we're, we're not using any chemicals as they do in biodiesel to strip, to strip the fatty part of the oil molecule off. Um, the oil that comes out is essentially unmodified other than removing the dirt and water. So we can, we can use that in our truck or, or any diesel vehicle simply by having a system of heating components. Our motivation came from my wife, Chris. Um, she retired uh, as a public health nurse uh, last July, and she had wanted to do a trip around the country to the, the remaining uh, green spots. So we've done a big loop up the west coast, across Canada, down the east coast, and across the Gulf states, and then a month in Colorado and then through the canyon lands and we've wound up here and we're, we have about one week left and we'll be back in Chico, California. This is an example of the way we get the oil. Uh, this is a, a four and a half gallon cube called a cubie. At this point in time when we go to a, a restaurant and, and we've been doing this again for nine months, um, we have had absolutely no problems uh, getting the oil from, uh, from restaurants. Uh, there are sometimes, uh, other than the fact that there may already be someone that's, uh, that's collecting the oil, we, we're on into that again uh, in some places where more people are doing this. You can see how, how dark it is. Uh, and so I put it in this uh, three gallon pot. Now this is the first demonstration we've, we've official one that we've done. Uh, we didn't start this trip out uh, thinking we would be ambassadors for vet straight vegetable oil as a fuel. And perhaps uh, we would have a little cleaner <laughs> setup. Uh, heat the oil uh, to about 170 degrees. Um, 160 is enough. I actually do mine to about 170 because it cools down a bit by the time it goes from the upper cooler down into the uh, centrifuge. Oh yeah, it's way empty. So I, you have to realize we're, we're dealing with oil that's 170 degrees, so you really have to be careful. Um, I wear gloves when I pick this up. Um, Anytime I'm heating the oil, I also have a, I would rather have a bigger one than this, but uh, a fire extinguisher handy. So far, we've never had any fires. And I walk the oil around here. This is probably the, the most dangerous part is walking the ladder up, so. Sometimes, and I just simply pour it in the top. There are a few safety things that I'm I'm not doing, and part of that is for the because we're recording it. I just have a standard valve here that I control the rate of the flow into the, this is a centrifuge that was I made from a, an acne juicer. So what happens is the dirty oil comes in here. It gets uh, separated from the dirt and the water in the centrifuge, and then the clean oil comes out where the juice would normally come out and goes down into a, what I call my clean to, uh, cooler down here. And once this gets filled up, I have just a standard, in fact, it's pumping oil right now. I have a standard 12-volt uh, fuel pump that uh, pumps this right into my veggie oil tank. And you can see the difference between uh, how dark this oil was and how, how clear 
uh, and clean looking this the finished product is so this is a what an acme juicer looks like before we do any modifications to it it's they've been made since the at least since the 50s it has a a very strong uh, motor that spins this uh, that spins this uh, eight, approximately eight inch bowl at 3500 rpms and what we've done is simply take uh, fiberglass resin and put a thin layer on the outside and also on the inside so that sealed up the holes so now when the the uh, oil comes in here it can't go out through these holes so what happens is the clean oil will gra gradually build up and come up over this lip and then it, it just goes out uh, to the basket out here so it ends up in the same place as the juice used to go it just takes a different path and as long as I don't uh, feed that the raw oil in faster than five or eight gallons an hour it has enough time to just separate and and come out. If I if I increase the rate too fast and there's too or there's too much water in the in the oil, uh, what happens is some of that water will get flushed out and come over the top with the clean oil. So when I, I do these tests every three gallons, um, I'm checking to make sure that water is not coming out. We can run the centrifuge for about four hours, which gives me about 23 gallons of fuel and 18 of that uh, gallons will go in my tank and then I keep this as a reserve and as I use up the tank oil I'll pump that in later. Um, after about 23 gallons I have to when I take the centrifuge apart to clean the bowl out it's sort of like uh, like cleaning out an espresso machine you'll see um, a fine brown looking uh, very solid uh, layer, perhaps a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch, and that'll just be solid. And I just scoop that out with a, a rag, and then I'm ready to do another 23 gallons. One thing I do uh, intermittently, every time I heat a new three gallon batch and pour it in, I have to recheck my flow rate. What I do is I just, I have a timer, I punch the timer, and I'll check, open this up, for a one minute period and that'll, t by how much uh, I get during that one minute, that tells me what my, my flow rate is in gallons. And then, once I've done that, I'll take it over, I'll take it over and pour it in this frying pan. And if I can remove this for a second, What I do is I'll heat that frying pan up until the oil starts smoking. And that's about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And when I get it to that range where it's, where it's smoking, uh, I can count the number, if any, of bubbles that are small bubbles start to form on the bottom of the pan. Those bubbles are actually dissolved water. And um, the water is the primary uh, thing we're trying to get out of the oil. Uh, the centrifuge does the dirt, and if it doesn't get all the dirt out, um, I have a, a standard fuel filter in the, as part of the truck system that that will take out the rest of the dirt. So I don't have to worry about that. But the the water that is dissolved in oil d does not separate very easily, and. Um, so what happens if you have a little bit of water in here, that, that could uh, prematurely uh, shorten the life of my fuel injector pump for the truck. This oil was very good. Uh, this is also one reason we, we, particularly in colder weather, we go to the Asian restaurants for our oil. Okay, so that's good in smoking and we have no bubbles. So I'm quite happy with the flow rate. Uh, Sasha. Hey, Sashi. Sashi. Look cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> she like. Uh, I have to watch. Be careful. She doesn't lick the oil. She really likes the oil. <laughs> yeah. But it, it will give her diarrhea if she 
if she licks too much of it, so I have to keep an eye on her when I'm doing this. Here, the other uh, animal that really likes oil are bears. <laughs> and we were, we have processed a few places up in British Columbia uh, and even near Yosemite where we, we did have some concerns that we might have some un uh, uninvited diners coming to check out our oil. But uh, fortunately, Zasha is pretty ferocious. Well, we absolutely loved British Columbia um, and Western Alberta. The, there's an area called the Kootenays, which is sort of off most of the tourist track. It's kind of west of, uh, southwest of Banff, where all the tourist, tourists go. And it's a nice little mountainous, uh, almost an island because it's, it has all these narrow fjords that are reservoirs, but the, they look like narrow fjords. And you have to take little ferries that are free to get across to the island. And then once you're there, they, they have all these little mountain communities. And you drive up a little winding road over a pass and you go down into another valley. And we liked it so much. We did a whole circle of the valley and we had found a real good source of oil. So we did a, we did a whole loop and came back and got more of the oil. And uh, that's where we had the most of the bears uh, you know, come close to us. And um, it, it was really a nice area. How do we run this since it's, an, it's AC, uh, 550 watts to, um, to run this, uh, the centrifuge? Well, what we have is we have two solar panels on our roof, which give us 220 uh, watts of solar when we have sun. And in the bed of the pickup truck on the other side, I have two uh, deep cycle batteries that also um, give me 220 amp hours. And um, I did all the calculations that when I do have full sun, uh, I can, it gives me enough current to charge the battery so that I can run the juicer for uh, four hours, which will give me one complete uh, processing and 23 gallons of fuel. Uh, the one item that you can't see is around the side that converts the DC current from the batteries into AC current for the, the, the centrifuge. is called an inverter. And we have an inverter that's rated at 1,200 watts. If you're running straight vegetable oil, you really want to have good quality heating components that get that oil to at least 170 degrees, and then you won't have any problems with burning oil. A lot of the people who have had problems with uh, oil either uh, haven't gotten the water out completely, uh, or they have not, uh, they don't have enough heating components um, to heat it up to 170 degrees to use as fuel. We have uh, four components, the, and the, three of the components are simply uh, run off your, your regular heating or cooling system for your truck, and you just uh, put a T in the line that goes to your regular heater, and then you run, um, in my case, half-inch heater, heater hose out to my vegetable oil tank. It goes up to the front of the engine where I have a what's called a heat exchanger, <clears throat> which is like a, a little shoe box that has 26 plates in it. And the oil runs on one side and the, the antifreeze on the other. So that component probably <clears throat> gets it the hottest. And that'll, if your thermostat on your truck is set at 190 degrees, like mine is, um, it will it'll easily get it up to 180 degrees. There's not too much heat loss there. And the fourth component is, um, is simply a, an electric tube uh, that's about a foot long. And that has a, a, a 30 amp at 12 volt uh, heater in it. It's just, it's just simply a, a tube. It's like, almost like a, it's very simple, like a toaster. See, it's pretty, uh, you can tell the kind of roads that we go on. <laughs> it's really dusty. The, some of the heating uh, the components you can see, um, this is, this is a, a, a filter. Um, these are some of the switching valves here and here that switch between the diesel. And under here is the heat exchanger. 
which I don't think you can see very well. It's just a little shoe box with a bunch of thin plates in it. Even the whole trip, we've uh, consumed more than 1,100 gallons of fuel. And um, at the current prices, that would probably be about $4,500 that we would have had to pay for fuel costs on the trip. Um, that $4,500 has more than paid back our investment in the truck. Um, I invested about $2,000 to convert the truck. and. Um, and probably another $500 in uh, pumps to collect the oil. I, I have a 12-volt a pump that when I collect oil, I'll drive up, um, I'll drive up and uh, hook that into my car battery, or I have a jump extension cables the, that I can hook up, and that, that pumps the oil. That, that works down to about 40, well, actually down to about 30 degrees, 35 degrees maybe. At that point, the vegetable oil is too thick to pump through my pump. And um, we spent one month in Colorado where the average temperature was probably below freezing and down to five below in times. And what we had to do then was um, uh, we reverted to buying a, a big saucepan and a couple of uh, old big mouth buckets. And so I, it never really froze. It just would be like a, a big uh, snow cone or a slushy kind of thing. And I literally had to scoop it out and put it in these buckets and then let the buckets warm up inside the truck uh, before we could, before we could uh, then run through the heating process here. And you could have done the trip on biodiesel and not had to do any conversion at all. Uh, but part of the problem is, um, First off, uh, as much as it's touted, a lot of the biodiesel that's sold is uh, either what they call B5, which is 5%, or B20, which is 20%, uh, or even as low as B2, which is only 2% biodiesel. Because of our conversion, uh, we can actually burn B100, even in the wintertime, in our veggie system, because we have the means to heat it. And the places that we store oil, um, I will keep five gallons of uh, unprocessed oil in there, and we keep another five here. Um, these little uh, four and a half gallon cubies, I put two of them behind each of the seats up in the cab. So we carry 18 gallons up in the cab. Uh, one, one conversion I did to the camper is uh, I took one of the, uh, the waste storage uh, tanks for the camper. They have two ten, this one particular one has two 10 gallon tanks. And I, made, I converted one of them to use for vegetable oil to carry the, old, the, the oil. I added an extra fill container and I can put I have, uh, 10 gallons of oil in this. There's a tank inside there. In the front of the truck, we have a we have a winch, which normally sits in here. But I thought, well, this would be a good place to, to carry another, uh, actually, 11 gallons, counting that, 11 gallons of oil. So we do store some of our oil under here. We can get about nine gallons of oil in there. Our bathroom is pretty full, <laughs> full of oil. <laughs> We keep about uh, 20 gallons of oil in the bathroom. So sometimes that's a little inconvenient when we want to take a shower. We have to move all that oil around. Would I do it again? Oh, absolutely. In the last year, we have saved uh, almost 1,200 gallons of fuel, of diesel fuel that we did not have to buy. And the oil that we did use um, was free and uh, contributed less than 50% of the pollution that we would have done. Not only was it free, it was less polluting.